Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Undefeated. So y'all think I'm gonna go back to the regular format of about 18 minutes? Yeah, that seems to be the sweet spot for us. But anyway, y'all, let's just go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <laughs> I lean back into my pillow, my face crunched up in discomfort. No use fighting my injuries. I can't seem to get free. Might as well try to get some more sleep. This is what I wanted to do. The dull sounds from outside my door had grown much, much louder. I think I recognized the voice. I'm afraid that's the only conclusion here. Don't explain it to me. Explain it to him. The door to the room I'm laid down on laid down and is forced open. Light from the hallway pours in and I'm blinded if only for a moment. A shadow casts into the room, but it hesitates. Oh, for fuck's sake, get in here! Judging from the other person's yelp and the way he stumbled into the room, someone else may have pushed him in. After regaining his footing, he looks to the door, then to me. Before me stands a nervous-looking rabbit. He's dressed rather well, sort of similar to the attendant on the elevator from before. His eyes catch mine and his demeanor loosens up. Uh, uh, hello there, Alex. I narrow my eyes. Uh, my name is Theodore. I'm the commissioner's assistant. Hmm. The figure by the door scoffed. My eyes snap over to him. Bruce. He's leaning against the open door, arms crossed over his chest. I've never seen him act so... mellow. Theodore clears his throat. Uh, yes, uh... The rabbit adjusts his collar slightly. You've, uh... met Bruce. I let out a sigh. I have. I nearly fucking killed him. His voice cut through the tension, yet somehow only seemed to add to it. Oh, he's still dressed like that, okay. Bruce moves from his spot on the door toward the two of us. I can see Theodore's eyes dart away, and he takes a step back from the approaching dino. Is he seriously Bruce's boss? Bruce stops in front of my bed. You want to tell him why the fuck that happened? The rabbit manages to keep his posture upright, but his ears fold down. He really must not want to be here. He, that's... He, yes, uh... He takes a shaky breath and steadies himself. You, uh, certainly were popular. Your fight with Bruce put our ratings to the roof. I blink. Thanks? Get to the point, Ted. Right. Theodore clears his throat. Obviously, this was uh, unintended. According to a quick manual review, you should have been involved in a lightweight bout tonight. It's... we can't exactly explain what happened, but... For some reason, Bruce was your opponent. The rabbit readjusts his tie. Now, in terms of your, uh, contract, typically you need to win one fight before the duties of your contract can be considered fulfilled. And I can, uh, <laughs> understand why you'd like to back out. Unfortunately, uh, there's a, a bit of a snag. Bruce rolls his eyes. Because of the nature of our automated matchmaking system, anyone that fights the champion is momentarily set in a special tier of their own. If they win, they become the champion. If they lose, they return to their tier. And you don't have a tier to return to. I can visibly see sweat dripping down his brow. So you remain in this, uh, momentary tier. It sounds like he needs to say he needs to say more, but he stops. He glances at Bruce for approval? My heart feels like it's ready to drop. I, I don't understand. It means you're stuck fighting me. Oh my god. Bruce's voice barks out again, scaring Theodore, nearly scaring me. And it means you're going to keep fighting me. Until this fucking matchmaking works itself out. Sweat trickles down the sides of my head. I, I don't understand. Or maybe I don't want to understand. What, are matches made at random? There's a second silence where Bruce and Theodore make a bit of eye contact. Well, not entirely. A computer sorts out matches through a deeply detailed algorithm. It's actually quite impressive when you look into it. Bruce snorts a bit of air through his snout, as if trying to get Theodore to speak further. Can't, can't someone just go in and make the change manually? Again, Theodore looks away before speaking. Uh, all manual changes to the matchmaking must be approved by the commissioner first. So call him down. Bruce says at a laugh that's more like a yell. You'd sooner be able to beat me than expect the commissioner to give a shit. His eyes shift down to Theodore, whose eyes, sh whose eyes shift away directly away. I can feel my body going faint, like the sick, like the sick you feel deep in the pit of your stomach. The thought of going through that again. So, what? What are my options? The rabbit speaks up. I'm afraid that until this issue is uh, assorted, you will need to keep fighting Bruce, or you'll void your contract. I'm sure you're aware of the uh, consequences. I have read the contract carefully. It required me to pay out my ass, and I can't afford that. I'll never be able to afford that. 
Money was part of the reason I came down here. The heart monitor is picking up pace at this point, and I hadn't even noticed. Priest and Theodore are silent for a long time. I'm leaving. If you have any questions, Ted here will tell you what tell you whatever bullshit you want to hear. The dinosaur spits the last few words and turns on his toes and stomps out the door. Theodore just sort of stands there, quiet. He seems less nervous now. He still won't make eye contact with me. Is there a, anything else I can answer for you? I don't even know what to say. What I ask. I'm struggling to process what I'm hearing. Theodore notices my silence and steps away from the bed. I'll, uh, I'll give you some time, Alex. I don't bother correcting him. If you need to speak to me, please reach out to any of our helpful staff here. Rest well. And with that, Theodore trails out the room. I'm al And I'm alone. Again. Some time, he says. They say time heals all wounds. You'd think it'd be able to... Make a, you think it'd be able to make any of this any easier, but it's been a few days, and I still haven't done much. The quality of the medical staff here definitely is as advertised. Everyone is so receptive to my needs, I really try not to ask for all that much. The last few days kind of went by without, without much going on, aside from whatever the nurses are putting into my body. Explained as a medical steroid type thing? I probably should have paid more attention. Whatever it is, I'm not allowed to leave my bed outside of bathroom breaks. Any amount of serious movement could extend the healing process, they said. They also say that it's extra restrictive for newbies, though. Bodies react differently to new medicines, especially for stuff as strong as this. They need to keep me monitored just to make sure nothing's going wrong in my system, apparently. It kind of sucks that I can't even go for a walk. My legs have been aching for a while. My ears flicker over to the door, catching some footsteps that seem to be getting closer. They're proven right, with the door swinging open, and a man I, that I assume is my doctor waltzing with a clipboard. Oh, good morning, Alex. Xander. My name is Dr. Drayden. I'm the athletic physician that's been working with your case. How are we feeling today? A sigh slips from my mouth, but I catch myself when his head turns up to my face. I'm good. I sort of shake my head. Not really pleased with my first interaction with the guy. He doesn't seem to notice. Gotcha. Well, Alex, we've got your test results back. Uh, good news and bad news. My eyebrows twitch. What's the bad news? He pauses. His face... His face in a contorted in a frustrated way. Like I said, something he didn't want to hear. Uh, well, the good news is that you're good to go. Everything came back negative, and your shoulders should be good as new. The cat flashes a smile that warms my chest, let out a breath that I must have been holding in for a while. That's relieving to know. And the bad news? The papers he had lifted off the clipboard had, he flipped back there, had been flipped back down, and he flashes a wink at me. The bad news is that you're probably going to be seeing a lot more of me. You know, given your situation. He lets out a small laugh, and my heart sinks right back. I had spent the last few days keeping myself distracted with some television. I'm not particularly keen on thinking about the repercussions of my current predicament. You can tell I'm not exactly excited with that prospect either, and his laugh peters out. Well, I mean, at least, I hope you don't. Ted filled me out on the situation. It sounds like you're, uh, really going through it. You could put it that way, yeah. His smile stayed for a second or so before he snapped down to his clipboard. But, uh, yes, so, vitals. Uh, blood tests all came back negative. A mild concussion. Uh, X-rays are looking fine. You'll need a bit of physical therapy to get your rotator and tendon back up to speed, but otherwise we're able to discharge you right now. Don't shoulders take a couple weeks to get fixed? Usually, yes. I take it you've had this happen before. I frown. Dislocated? Yeah. Under different circumstances, though. Drayden waves his hands non-committally. Of course, of course. So you probably know how it goes. Uh, usually there's no serious exercise allowed, no major lifting, none of that. However, the steroids we've pumped into your system are special. They enhance your body's natural regenerative abilities, for lack of better terms. Obviously, it's not going to enhance your ability in fights or anything, and it won't help you recover from room wounds during a fight, but it gets our fighters up and running much faster than they would naturally, so everybody's grateful for that, I'd say. The smile on his face made him look almost as, made, almost made him, made him look almost proud of the process. I can't exactly say I blame him. The tests? Just some simple blood work, really. Make sure your liver is handling the medication properly, and, you know, cancer, things like that. My heart jumps at the words, and I sit up. Cancer? Again, though, he shakes his head casually, like he's trying to shoo me away. There hasn't been a case yet, so I wouldn't exactly be worried about it. And still, if your body decides to push it too hard, and blood work would catch it up, would catch it right off the bat, so we can nip it in the bud before it becomes an issue. I can't help but worry that my contract would get voided if they couldn't use the medication anymore. Medication anymore, but Dresden... But Drayden doesn't seem to be fretting over it. 
The feline pulls a chair away from the wall and drops onto it, crossing his legs and resting his clipboard on them. I'll set you up with some physical therapy with yours truly here in a day, but I think it's best for you to get out of this room. Get some fresh air. Uh, well, I mean, so to speak. You've been here for, what, four days? The only people you've met were Bruce and Ted? I feel like you'd be more deserving of a proper welcome, all things considered. I nod, still a bit nervous of what, would that, what that would entail. Would the others here resent me? Would they hate me? Applaud me? I haven't exactly had a chance to get, re to get a read on anyone else. Now, Alex, before I let you go... His pen clicks. He looks up to me. Do you have any questions for me? His eyes meet, his eyes meet with mine. Silence lingers between us for a moment. Do I have any questions? Yes. For him? Not really. Not anything that he can answer or anything that he can help with. Come on, Alex. There's got to be something I can answer. I'm a licensed therapist, too, so you can talk with me about anything. My brow furrows. I thought you were an athletic physician. Again, Drayden waves his hand. I wear many hats, Alex. That's probably why they hired me. But I like to think it's because of my winning personality. He gives off that proud smile again. I can't help but breathe out a chuckle. Questions, though. I honestly can't think of anything relevant. I know my situation. I know how the medicine works. I feel like I've gotten a handle on this guy's personality. For the most part. For the most part, at least. Well, if you've got no questions and you're feeling alright, then we can go ahead and get you on your feet. I guess he took my unintended silence as an answer. Am I feeling alright? I guess I'm pretty anxious to meet everyone else. To continue my training. Maybe I just need to psych myself up again. Like I did on the elevator before. My stomach turns. Though I'm not sure whether that's from the thinking about the fight or from the sight of the needle coming out of my skin. Ugh! Drayden assists me out of the bed. My first steps are a bit shaky, all things considered. I've hardly walked in four days, so I feel kind of like a little, like a fawn for a bit. The sling underneath, the sling underneath my arm gets, gets undone and pulls back around my neck. I rotate my shoulder a bit, stretching it out from side to side. It's definitely still sore. Still, it's nice to have my arm back. Can you stick out both your arms for me, slowly? I oblige, and Drayden slips my gown off of me, balling it up and tossing it into a hamper across the room. After a, qu after a quiet cheer and a fist pump, I'm making a shot from such a distance he turns to my bare body. There's a spare change of clothes in the washroom for you. I'll give you a call when I've got your physical therapy appointment all set up. Um, what else? He snaps his fingers a few times with one hand, holding the bridge of his nose in the other. Oh, right, rooming situation. Head to the cafeteria. Uh, there's a guy there, Red. Little hyena guy. A real sweet guy. He should be looking for you. I nod and slip into the washroom to the side. Sure enough, under those fluorescent lights was a set of clothes. A familiar, a familiar tank top and a pair of baggy pants. Putting on these clothes feels nice. Feels familiar. It's been so long since I was able to just be properly alone. No one watching me, no cameras, no fights. The clothes press against my fur like a long, like a long loose hug, welcoming me home. I know I can't stay in this bathroom for too long, but I almost consider it. Drayden would have some questions, though. I want to soak in this feeling for as long as I can. After a bit, I slide back out. Drayden's still there, tapping away on his phone. His ears twitch when I move, and his head soon follows. All good in there? My mouth curls up into an awkward smile. I'm still not sure how to answer that. Yeah. Thank you. His smile remains, but he waves me off. No, thanks needed. Uh, just doing my job. Uh, good luck out there. Oh, and hey, if you need to talk, my office is right next door. We exchange another set of awkward thank yous before I leave, following instructions from a nurse to get, the, get to the cafeteria. Getting out of the med bay wing takes a bit of concentration. There are a lot of rooms with various states of occupancy, but there seem to be good spirit. There seem to be, in, to be good spirits all around as I hear them. People talking, laughing, joking with each other. I can feel the tightness in my chest loosen ever so slightly. I pass by a few more closed doors before leaving the medbay wing entirely. The white and red accented floor tiles swap to a light cream as I move to the rest of the main floor. The halls of the facility are surprisingly clean. Not like I pictured them as a dirty as dirty or run down or anything, but they seem almost sterile. Quiet, too. Even the medbay had a number of people strolling around on their ways to and from rooms and offices. These halls are basically empty. I only see one raccoon person stroll by, and he has his earbuds in. Duffel bag under his arm, too. Probably on his way back from the gym. He looks pissed. There's a, bag, there's a bandage rolled around his bicep and what looks like a bit of crusted blood perched under his snout. Don't worry, buddy. It's probably just an off day. I can only imagine how brutal the coaches can be down here. I've heard a bit about them, but nothing about anyone in particular. The guy in the hall flicks his eyes to catch mine. His glare nearly cuts me in half. My eyes dart away. I've really got to work on this staring at people thing before it gets me in trouble. He continues past me down the hallway, and I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll see him again. 
Hopefully on more friendly terms. It's a big facility, but there's only so many of us down here. At least, at least it's a big facility. I haven't exactly had the time to explore. Now could be a good time, though. And it probably won't do me any harm if it's on the way to the cafeteria, right? As I was leaving the med bay, I had passed a number of office rooms. I assume they were general administrative stuff. Not really anything juicy there. The raccoon fellow from earlier moved out of one of, the of one of these next rooms coming up. Upon closer inspection, the walls of this section of the hall are actually giant windows. I decided to look into one. There's two guys practicing some submission wrestling, with a third guy leaning up against a wall. He looks exhausted. Our eyes meet for a second. He looks to his friends, mutters something, and the other two laugh for a second. He looks back at me and smiles, nodding his head as if to greet me. Greet me. For some reason, I feel like I should have looked away. I think I feel like I was intruding. I watch people wrestle all the time. This is nothing new for me. At least at my old gym, with my old teammates. I smile and nod at him before walking forward again. I think I see the man mouth... The, the, I think I see the man's mouth opening... Uh, man, man mouth something, pointing at me from the corner of my eye. I definitely should have kept walking sooner. I don't know anyone here yet. It feels rude to engage with some of these folks without at least introducing myself. Though, that may not have been the reason he was pointing. I still don't know how big of a name I made for myself down here. Do they get to watch the fights? Did everyone see what happened with Bruce? It's not like people would make fun of me for something like that. Probably. It's not like I'd. It's not like I'd. Uh, it's not like I'd really care if they did. That's just more annoying than anything else. I just rather go in with as little of a reputation as possible. I pass by a couple dozen more mat rooms on my way through the hall. Roughly half. Roughly half of them seem to have a similar layout for the first one. Just as large, solid mats stretching across the floor. Granted, though, the rest of these were empty. The other half of the rooms had a, had a number of smaller mats with one or two large spaces off to the side, marked with a large circle on the ground. Heavy bags lined the back walls of these ones, clearly made for striking practice. I feel like I'm going to be spending plenty of time in these rooms, not like I'll have much of a choice at least. That first long stretch of hallway seemed to take up one half of the main floor, with a small segment on either side of the hall sec sectioned off for a pair of staircases halfway through. I'll probably figure out where these go eventually. Right now, I need to get to the cafeteria. Even though I'm really not that hungry, hospital food was pretty damn good. But I can't exactly get to my room without knowing where it is. I mean, I could, but there's probably a key or password or something, and I need to find Red to get that information. I could brute force it, but that would take more time, patience, or ramming strength than I'm willing to spend right now. Luckily, the cafeteria seems to be right here, judging from the amount of sound coming from it. I had heard it from a few doors down, but I guess I must have been too lost in thought. I turned the corner into the door without a door into the noise. The open doorway leads into a massive chamber, with tables and seats scattered about all over. These seats, of course, are filled with men of various shapes, sizes, and species. The vibe seems similar to what I heard back in the med bay, just much louder. People chatting, laughing, scarfing down food. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm really enjoying this so far. Quite a predicament our main character has found himself in. Eesh. Oh, man, he's, gonna, he's got a lot more beatings coming in, coming in his future. Ah, uh, anyway, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I have a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.